So it's almost over, the night when lots of Canadian families set off fireworks. I've just come back from our neighborhood show. We had sparklers, the cyclone, the galactic storm, battle in the clouds, and the devil siren. We ended with the burning schoolhouse. That was my contribution. I insist on it every year. Always over the protests of my neighbor Rick, who says that watching the burning schoolhouse is as exciting as setting a shoebox on fire. Rick is wrong. I admit there's some problems. I've had schoolhouses that were duds, disappointments. Only one out of every three or four of them actually burns right down. The manufacturer admits it. He says that cardboard doesn't burn the way it used to. I say the suspense is part of the dramatic charm. Maybe you remember 1979. That was a different problem. Someone in the factory drilled a lot of holes that are supposed to be down here on the chimney too low. And an unfortunate number of these guys fizzled. Recently in British Columbia, some PTA group tried to single out the burning schoolhouse as a major contributing factor in the rise of school vandalism. They tried to have it banned. They failed. Now, I know you can't buy this or any of these things in Alberta or New Brunswick without a license. I feel sorry for you. I can buy them where I pick up the milk. The schoolhouse is a Canadian invention. It has always been the correct Canadian finale, and it hasn't changed, not a brick, during the life of anyone watching tonight. They won't let two inchers into the country anymore. There was one called the Screecher, which used to jump down the entire length of the driveway all the way to the gutter. It's gone, too dangerous. So are the rockets. The schoolhouse endures. And I know it looks smaller than it used to, but it isn't. You've grown. I'm Stuart McLean in Toronto.